Hey there friends, this video is more of a warning of things to look out for. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the South American crime craze that we're starting to witness here in the United States. Now this has been going on for several months now and the media has done a fabulous job of sweeping most of the reports of this under the carpet. However, in a nutshell, there are South American crime rings, Chilean mostly is where it seems like a lot of them are from, but Colombian as well, and of course Mexican, where these folks are coming in across the open Biden border, and they're coming into our country, and they're launching very sophisticated attacks on high-end neighborhoods and homes. Here's a video to kind of break it down for you and then we'll talk about it more. Traveling band of thieves that was in the spotlight months ago appears to be back at work. They're targeting high-end homes when the owners go out of town. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skilly. The last time we heard about this, the losses were a million dollars a week and the heist seemed to be getting more sophisticated. Well, now the Oakland County Sheriff putting out a new warning. We think there was at least three to four uh, incursions of the groups in Oakland County in the last four to five days. The security video we've seen over the past six months is chilling enough. Unencumbered and well-equipped thieves knock out glass doors, disable the alarm system, and unconcerned, easily and frankly quite loudly, slide a half-ton safe down a flight of stairs before carrying it off in a rental car. They come in teams with backpacks. Each backpack has a different tool set. Some are the breaching tools, some are the electronics to jam alarm systems very quick, sophisticated actions. Local, state, and federal officers went to work and put enough pressure on these thieves to head elsewhere, yet they've cycled back from LA, New York, Tennessee, and Ohio now, and more efficient than ever. Bouchard says the last group of alleged thieves arrested received training in Chile, and they're roving with dozens of others. Now we know we have teams from Colombia, and uh, New York intelligence has teams uh, like criminal gangs from Venezuela now. They rent hotel rooms, Airbnbs, apartments, carrying multiple disposable IDs in case they get arrested. Bouchard says if you're leaving your home empty and quiet for a while. Now what ends up happening here is that they're using very sophisticated electronics like trail cameras, putting trackers on your car. So again, to be clear, these guys are super sophisticated. They come in in teams, four, five, six, each one with a backpack, each one of them with a set of tools or devices in their backpack based on where they're going. Some have uh, normal burglary tools to get through some of these doorways and windows and things like that. As you saw, sometimes they're just gonna break a window and make their way in through a double pane glass window uh, door like this. Some of them have electronic stuff that's allowing them to jam and even bypass and clear in some cases these security systems so they're able to in some cases um, fake or uh, fool I should say the security system into being a legitimate entry code or something like that and making their way through in many cases their security systems and they're not even armed the people are not turning them on you saw the video where they're so brazen where they're going to steal a several hundred pound maybe even thousand pound i don't know and not knowing what's inside of it safe and they're just rolling it down the stairs they throw it in a rental car and then they take off and these people have burner names so when they do get picked up, especially if they're in a state where they have no bail or very little bail, they simply give a fake name and burn it and move on to the next name that they have and that they want to use. So there's no real way of tracking or tracing any of these people in order to locate them. Now, I thought it was a little bit funny that in some of the newscasts that I've seen where they tell residents how to prepare for this, most of the preparation is lock your doors, arm your uh, security systems, uh, have redundant ways of uh, tying your cameras in. In other words, not just wireless, do some hard wiring, things like that too. And none of them were my advice. My advice, get a gun, learn how to use it, and don't be afraid to use it. That's the best deterrent. In all of the research that I did looking at where these groups are coming in and where they're actually committing most of these crimes, you know where they're not? They're not doing it in the South or in the Midwest, mostly in areas that have lots of guns. 
In fact, they're predominantly committing these crimes in very high anti-gun areas. California, Michigan, uh, New York, mostly East Coast, West Coast, and of course, Chicago, Illinois. And I think I even saw some Indiana and Ohio areas. And again, they're not doing this in these red areas of those particular states. They're sticking to the blue areas that are known to be anti-gun and not be armed. So if these people would realize that giving someone a lead diet in many cases is a pretty good deterrent, in other words, it, it's that's like a universal language. You don't need to speak Spanish or anything else to understand the consequences of going into an area where its residents are heavily armed and not afraid to use these firearms. It's very, very universal, the message that you are sending. A couple of things that I would like to point out, other than the firearms and getting proficient with your firearms, obviously there are things you can do to try to deter that. I guess one of them is don't have nice stuff, because clearly they're being drawn to these nicer areas, and they're going into them based on strictly how they look and the prestige of these places. I'm being sarcastic when I say that. Still get, still have good stuff. But the things you can do to prepare, again, lighting, camera systems that work, camera systems that send you notifications. I get bugged all day long with notifications, but I look at every single one. I have nine cameras around my house. Most of them, in fact, the vast majority of them are false alarms, motion detected. But my cameras also can determine if it is a person, even a dog barking, um, or just motion. Now, sometimes the motion can be a person, but in a lot of ca cases, if it sees a person, it can identify it as a person and says, this is a person on your camera. Obviously, you run straight to those and look at those. Usually delivery people, uh, my wife or my son. Uh, but I mean, it could be somebody seeking to come here. Now, I know some of these thieves have tracking, uh, excuse me, jamming devices for that. However, you're not going to jam my cameras without at least one notification getting out. You have to get close enough to those cameras to jam them. So I'm gonna get at least one notification. So that's why it's important to look at all your notifications. If you feel like you're getting too many notifications from your cameras, maybe don't have all your cameras send you notifications. In other words, if you feel like you're, if someone has to get um, past one camera to get into your backyard, maybe you don't need the notifications for the backyard. Maybe whatever that camera was that they would have passed is the one you turn your notifications on. So if you have nine cameras like I do, maybe only four of them need to be sending you notifications. Because I'm thinking now, um, and mainly mine, I don't have the notifications in my backyard set because those are mostly for my son whenever I'm home. Well, I'm here already. Um, and I'm already kind of, I have something up with all those open. So the only time it really matters to me is whenever my son is in the backyard. And again, I'm here and I have the camera system already open. So I'm not looking for notifications. It doesn't matter. I'm already looking at the cameras. But I probably am only getting notifications from four different cameras. You know, um, garage, front door, uh, side of the house, north side of the house. And of course, there's one that oversees my entire backyard where if something were to happen in my backyard, uh, overall in the perimeter, I would see that. So I may not see the things in the middle of the backyard, but you're not going to get into my backyard without me getting a notification from one of the other cameras. Just some ways to probably streamline um, some suggestions and ways to streamline the types of notif notifications you get. Because you don't want to get so many of them that you start discounting them and you start uh, dismissing them and saying, that's oh, that's just, that's that's my azalea bush waving in the wind again. There again, maybe you adjust those settings. So you can go into most of your settings on your cameras and adjust the sensitivity. So if you feel like a, a crepe myrtle tree or something like that blowing back and forth is prone to setting off your sensors and sending you a notification, go in there and tighten that up a little bit or cut the freaking branch down. I mean, <laughs> that's more than likely what I would do. But nevertheless, you can go tweak those settings with your cameras. Probably the number one thing, though, that I think is important, and it's probably a twofold thing, but it's all piled into the same subcategory. When these people go into these neighborhoods, I can guarantee you that's not the first time they've been there. They've surveilled that place before. If your place gets hit, somebody from that group has been in that neighborhood before. 
they've slowly driven by that house multiple times probably from different angles they know where your cameras are they know where the access points to your yard um, how many entry points to your house you have if you leave your garage door open um, where your best lit areas are they know that I mean these are sophisticated groups they are not coming into the United States and going through all this trouble to go to these nice high-end homes without doing further research on their targets again they're coming so well uh, tooled and so well prepared with what they bring with them that they're not just willy-nilly going into a neighborhood and go oh, let's go hit that one no they're surveying these places and they know what they're hitting and they know a lot of information about that so I think it's very important that we look at the, the cars coming and going in our neighborhood. I know sometimes it's easier said than done. If you're on a very busy road, yeah, it's very unlikely you can do that. Plus, you're, if you're on a very busy road, you're probably not going to get hit anyway, right? High visibility. But there are pluses and minuses to every house. The high visibility, low probability of being robbed, possibly, if there's constant traffic and constant visibility on your house. My neighborhood, for instance one way in one way out good and bad i think more good but you have less traffic probably coming and going but when a car comes into the neighborhood i know if that car comes in the neighborhood if they're driving super slow i don't have a problem stopping them and ask them hey is there something i can help you with because if they need help i don't mind helping them but at the same time if it's somebody wondering that the nosy old guy at the front of the neighborhood me keep stopping me and just made eye contact with me and now he knows what I look like he knows what my car looks like guys less likely to come into this neighborhood and do any further scouting or whatever oh crap here's this nosy old guy that wants to see any car that passes through here and is going to stop us and talk to us they're less likely to pay any attention to these types of neighborhoods for that reason they don't want that kind of attention they don't want somebody to be able to pinpoint them and recognize them and pick them out of a lineup so don't be shy about giving people that eye. I don't care if people think I'm rude. I don't care. It's the safety of my family that I care about. And I certainly don't care. And yes, I will absolutely 100%. Without a doubt, I don't know any other way to drive that point home. I will absolutely profile. If you look like a Chilean crime spree uh, mob rolling through my neighborhood, super slow, looking down, peering a little bit over the steering wheel, I'm going to profile you. I'm going to look at you as this might be a Chilean mob. Is that going to hurt a couple of feelings? I don't care. I will go back to these for the safety of myself and my family every single time. I will leave a field of feelings in my wake if I have to in order to establish the fact that I am going to look out for my family. I don't care if you get your feelings hurt because you're driving by my house really slow and looking at my house. If you like the paint, that's great. If you want to know what kind of brick that I used, come ask me. But if you're sitting here trying to case my house, I'm going to give you that eye. I'm going to be that guy that will look at you with an accusing tone in my eye right off the bat because I wonder why you're driving by my house so slow and you have the appearance of a Chilean crime mob, right? So one thing we have to get over is do not worry about the people who will say, well, why did you pick them out? Let me tell you why I picked them out. Because they look like freaking criminals. That's why. Can you be more specific? No. I picked them out and I looked at them and I questioned them because they look like criminals. These are the things I have in my mind of what a criminal looks like. And guess what? History proves that I'm right because a vast majority of the criminals who are doing these things look like the people who were in that car. Don't be apologetic about it. Call them out. Look at them. Ask them questions. Call the police if you want to. I think that's a second line of defense. But nevertheless, call and report them. Tell them what kind of vehicles are passing through. Tell them that these people are casing the homes in this neighborhood. But make no mistake, when it comes to the safety of yourself and your family, do not be apologetic about it. Don't worry about what your neighbor, your coworker, the person driving the car, anybody, 
Do not worry about what they have to say. With this Biden border being wide open, you can expect more and more and more of this because these people are brazen. They know that the bail laws are being relaxed or completely done away with. They know that DAs are not prosecuting. And they know that we have an open border because it's incompetent fool in the White House. So this is all an attractant for these people to come into this country. And there's a reason why they're coming and being so sophisticated and so professional. Because they know they can get away with it. And they know that most people are not going to do a darn thing about it whenever they come into their homes and take all their stuff. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Peace out,